everyone, Mark here at Lone University. Welcome to lesson number 83. And in this lesson, we'll be focusing on how to make odd meter riffs groove. It's a very tough thing to do because odd meters, they're odd by nature. And just because of that, it's tough to make them feel symmetrical because they're not symmetrical at all. You can't divide five and a half very easily, musically speaking, or seven, eight, or nine, eight, or 11, eight. So what we have to do is really focus on things outside of the numerical aspect of rhythms to make them feel more natural and sort of divide them in places that feel more symmetrical. And it's sort of creating an illusion because it, we're still playing in 5-8, and this is a 5-8 riff, of course, but we have to kind of seek other measures to do that. So what we have here is sort of just a four chord progression, arpeggiating the notes, and it's sort of going along this two plus two plus one, and then two plus one plus two. So every chord change follows that same pattern. The notes are repeated on each group of two. So one, two, one, two, one. And then one, two, one, one, two. Okay, I have this tabbed out as the first thing in the lesson file PDF so you can see how I'm playing it originally. And then each figure is gonna go step by step on how we're gonna morph this into a more groovable bass line. So it starts off two plus two plus one, two plus one plus two. This is basically going through sort of like a C sharp minor seven with a nine, and then G sharp minor seven, nine. Then we have an A major kind of sharp 11 Lydian sound. So A, fifth, ninth, A, E, B, D sharp. Same thing down here on E. Just to give you an idea of what chords we're doing here. Okay. So when you think about groove, and I think about the greatest grooves I can think of in other songs, and you know, if I had to tie them all together as to what they have in common, it would be about the variation of long notes and short notes. And a lot of people think groove is down to actually the rhythm being created. And that's, of course, a huge part of it, but it goes so much beyond that. You know, I don't think of grooves as good rhythms. It's about how the rhythms are played. And it's sort of like something you need to look at in regards to the negative space of the riff. How long are the notes and where are the rests? So if you look at a, a bass line and you think it grooves, focus on the negative space, the silence, the rests. How long are the notes? When do the notes stop? And I kind of think about groove as like the human voice. When you listen to somebody's voice narrate something and it just sounds very, it just sounds very easy to listen to, it's because they have a, a variety of word lengths and accents. They enunciate things differently time and now and then. Some words are longer, syllables are drawn out, some things are kind of said short and staccato. And you can, you know, translate that to music too. Good melodies and stuff have a variation of note lengths and accents. So what we're gonna do is focus on that aspect. Like I said, take alternative measures besides just numbers and rhythm. So the first place I would start is the accents because that's what's felt in the riff already. The two plus two plus one, two plus one plus two. So since these notes are repeated, this is a pretty basic riff to start this on, and I'll kind of talk about what to do when the riff is a little more complex than this. But the principles remain the same. So going through this, the first chord, the C sharp minor seven nine kind of chord. Here's the notes we're gonna do that land on the beginning of each accent. So if I were to not repeat them and just play the first note of every accent, it would sound like this. Same down here. Same thing up here. And then same thing back down here. So that's gonna make it have a little more bounciness to it because we're adding rests in there. So it kind of has the whole positive space, negative space I was talking about a second ago. So I'm gonna play it again over the riff and let's just do that. Just play the first note of each grouping. You can see this in figure B. Let's check that out. All right, here we go. Accenting each grouping. <laughs> Yeah. 
get the idea. So that's what we're doing. Same thing as we played in figure A, we're just chopping off the repeated notes and just hitting those accents. So naturally it's gonna feel, you're gonna highlight the accents more. And that kind of grooves more because we're adding rests. You add rests into anything, it has some syncopation and groove. But how do we make this really bounce and kind of have flow? Think about the human voice. I'm gonna go back to that. An easy human voice to listen to is one with varied accents. Long words, short words, long syllables, short syllables. There's a variety. It's just it's a mixture and it all flows together well. So I'm simply gonna do this. On notes two and three, I'm gonna make them long and hold them out. So instead of repeating it, for two eighth notes, I'm just gonna hold that out for the length of two eighth notes and not repeat it. So that's varying it up, because this is a very da 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 kind of riff. So if I add some variation with the long notes, in conjunction with the short notes I just did, that small change will make it sound so much more natural and symmetrical. It will give it variation, and that's pleasing to the ear, and that's what makes things feel, you just kind of feel them more. I don't know how to explain it, it's just something about you know, how, how we humans are and how our minds think. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this, figure B. And I'm gonna make the first note short. I'm gonna make notes two and three long. And then the last remaining notes I'm gonna keep short. So I'm really changing, I guess, two notes. Kinda hard to think about. Just watch when I play it. I'm really focusing on those second and third notes, making them long. And that transition from the long short kind of gives it the stop and start feeling that makes things groove. Just listen to it and you'll see how different it is. So what I'm going to do to make you really feel the difference, the first time through I'm going to play it the way I just did in figure B. And then the second repeat through I'm going to play it as figure C dictates with the accents and long uh, notes added. Let's check that out. All right, first time through figure B, short, second time through figure C. <laughs> the idea. It grooves so much more and it just kind of has that and those long notes add that dynamic. I just can't explain it. I'm trying to but you just have to hear it and feel how much it grooves and this is just a starting point to make odd meter riffs groove. So the way I would do it when I get an odd meter riff I try to find the chordal changes and the accent points and you know I would say most riffs sort of go around a certain chord going on in that progression, just like this is. And you may have an odd meter riff that doesn't have repeated notes. This is a very, <clears throat> this is, groove is very tailored to what I'm talking about. So let's say it was moving around the chord a lot more. So instead of going through this C sharp minor seven nine chord, and just repeating notes, let's say it was just kind of going all around that scale, so that would just be sort of a, We'll just use a C sharp minor scale. So let's say it was just kind of going like. Something like that. So the way I've approached this in you know creative settings, such as writing music for any of the bands I've been in, <clears throat> what I've done is I've looked at every accent grouping because everything has an accent grouping. 4-4 four, four has an accent grouping. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 for eight eighth notes, right? So anytime you have an odd meter riff, you can always find that accent grouping. As we talked about in all the odd meter riffs and licks of the weeks, if you check those out, everything falls between a two, a one, or a three. Let me put those in order, a one, two, and three grouping. So look for those and just, it, it's really dictated how the riff is constructed with the drums and you can usually find that. So once you detect the accent pattern, you wanna go section by section. So maybe this two grouping and then this three grouping and then this one grouping and then this two grouping, whatever. <clears throat> and you wanna look at each note or, or the notes inside of each grouping and figure out what note is the common note. So for an example, let's say a grouping of three notes was like this. Let's say it was like a D minor seven chord. D, F, dominant seven. I can do it up here. Let's say just for one three note grouping in an odd meter riff, these were the three notes. 
So I would kind of look at that and notice that that shape is a D minor seven chord. It didn't matter what order they're played. It could be, or it could be, or. I just know that those three notes together make up that D minor seven chord. So the common note I would think of is D. So if I were doing this long, short, short type of principle, I would put a long D note that takes up three eighth notes worth of space because it's acting like a mini root note inside that three note grouping. We're getting really microscopic here. But if the notes don't repeat like they did in this riff, that's the next step I go to. I go through each accent grouping, look at the notes, and figure out what note is sort of the root note if those notes were to make a chord. I'm going to repeat that again because it's kind of specific. If I come on upon an accent grouping of three notes, it could be any three notes, I try to put those three notes together and think about what chord it could make if I arrange them. There's different ways you can arrange them. And I just pick the note that's probably the most common note. And sometimes it's a guessing game because, you know, theory and chords and all that, it's all perspective. You can rearrange notes to make multiple chords. So let's say another example, a three note grouping was E, B, and F sharp. Well, you could arrange that as like an E minor nine shape. Or I could put that as sort of a B. I could kind of do this kind of shape. I can put the F sharp, F sharp in the root and go like this. So th the most common way would probably be that first way. It just sounds most natural. So if I stumbled upon a grouping of three notes <clears throat> in any odd meter riff, and the three notes were F sharp, B, and E, I would rearrange them and figure out the most common permutation, figure out that the E minor 9 arpeggio would be best, and I would hold my long note for all three notes in that grouping, and that would probably sound most natural. So once again, all I'm doing is I'm making a variation of long and short notes inside the riff. So we started off with, we took out the repeated notes and just hammered the accents, two plus two plus one, two plus one plus two. Okay, and then I made the second and the third notes long and it added that variation. And I guess you could add that very last note long too. That way there's something long toward the tail end of it. Okay, get the idea. If I went through the whole thing. idea. It grooves much harder. All I did was change the duration of the notes. I didn't even have to creatively write anything to this riff. I started off playing exactly what the guitar was. I shortened the duration of the notes and I added long notes, kind of sprinkled them in there and mixed them up. It's a creative way to get effective bass lines without even having to come up with this crazy cool bass line. All right, try it at the end of this riff and I want you to go through all three figures in the order. Start with figure A, play it as written. Go to figure B, be real short and staccato. Just focus on those accent groupings and then add in figure C and make it groove. And if you want to get really creative, put the long notes in different places than I have. You can give it sort of a whole different feel and groove just by changing the duration of the notes. Very simple and very effective. All right, hope this helped and we'll see you next time.